Spice Park tutorial. Before we begin the tutorial, let us quickly review what is Apache Spark. Apache Spark is a data processing framework that can process large amounts of data using multiple machines or nodes. It allows you to run tasks in parallel across nodes, thereby achieving good performance with large amounts of data, which would not be possible with a single machine or sequential execution. Here's a simple architecture of an Apache Spark cluster. There is a master node and worker nodes. The master node assigns and coordinates tasks execution on worker nodes and uses cluster manager to manage cluster resources. In your code, you create a Spark session to interact with the Spark engine. Each user of the cluster has his own Spark session that allows him to use the cluster in isolation from other users. So what is PySpark? PySpark is simply a Python API for Apache Spark. It supports most of the Spark's features such as Spark SQL, data frames, streaming, machine learning, and Spark Core. In our demo, we will focus on data frames and Spark SQL. Let's go over some key concepts. RDD or Resilient Distributed Data Set is the basic data structure that Spark works with. It is an immutable distributed collection of data and it has no data schema or data types. Normally, you will not be working directly with RDDs. Data frame is an abstraction built on top of RDDs. It is a two-dimensional table of rows and columns with schema much like a spreadsheet. It provides a rich set of functions that allow you to solve common data analysis problems efficiently. Apache Spark queries usually return a data frame. This includes loading data from files, reading from a table, and operations that transform data. Partitions. When a large data set is split into smaller parts based on a criteria, these parts are called partitions. Partitions are basic units of parallelism in Apache Spark. This allows nodes to work on partitions or chunks of data in parallel. Spark session is the primary entry point for your program into the Spark application. Therefore, Creating a Spark session is usually the first thing you do in your PySpark code. Jupyter Notebook is a web-based interactive computing platform. It allows you to write and run code interactively and share it with others. For our demo, we will be using Google Colab. It is a hosted Jupyter Notebook service with computing resources. It allows anybody to write and execute arbitrary Python code through the browser and it is well suited for data analysis. Let's go to Google Colab URL and here select new notebook. As the new notebook opens, it will connect to the backend and allocate resources. So you can see the connect status changing to allocating and then connecting and initializing and finally connected. On the left hand side under folders, there is a folder called sample underscore data which has some sample files and we are not going to use them. Let us first uh, rename our Jupyter Notebook and we will call it orders. And next we will create a folder and call it data, which we will use later. And now we are ready to write our Python or PySpark code. We can write our code in these rectangular boxes or cells. Let's start with a simple Python print statement. So we will print hello. Okay, so that works fine. Now we are ready to set up our Spark environment. So for that, let us run this piece of code. Here we install OpenJDK and Spark. And we run that by keyboard shortcut Shift Enter or by hitting the Run button. Okay, that green arrow indicates that the code execution is complete. 
Now let us set up our Java home and Spark home. Add another cell by hitting plus code. And here we are creating the Spark session. Spark session is created successfully. Now let us upload our sample data file by hitting the upload button on the left. Select retail.csv. Okay, and we want to keep that data file retail.csv in the data directory we created earlier. Let's take a look at retail.csv. It has columns like order number, order date, product ID, customer ID, customer country, order status, amount, and data as rows, comma separated. Okay, now hit the plus code button to add a cell. We will read the contents of the retail.csv into a PySpark data frame. Here we provide path to the CSV file, header as true, separator as comma, and we want the schema to be inferred. So hit run. Okay, so now let's look at the contents of the data frame. So csvdf dot show. This would show us the contents of the data frame, which would be same as what is read from the CSV file. So this is nicely laid out with column names. Let's look at what schema has been inferred. So data frame dot print schema. Run that. And that's the schema. Everything other than amount has been inferred as string, which is more or less correct, except for the order date. This should have been of date data type. So let us correct that. We will import the to date function as shown, and using data frame dot with column, we use the to date function on order date column. Fill any part is there to simply replace any null values with a default date. So let's run that. Okay, execution complete. So uh, let's look at the schema one more time. So data frame dot uh, print schema. Let's, uh, look at the result. And now order date is of type date. Okay, now we will find out uh, the count of records in the data frame. Okay, so using the count function, we see that we have nine records in the data frame. Okay, let's look at the data one more time using the show function. And if you look closely, there is a duplicate record. Order number A9177, that particular record is repeated. So let us get rid of the duplicates. And that is easy to do. So data frame dot drop, drop duplicates. That will get rid of the duplicates. Let's run that. And we have a new data frame now. And let's look at the count in this new data frame, csvdf2. This should be 8 because a duplicate row has been eliminated. So we have 8 records now. And let's look at the data using the show function. And there is no duplicate record now. A9177 order number appears only. Now we will select a subset of columns from the data frame. We do this using the select method where we provide our columns of interest. So in this case, order number, order date, and amount. Let's run that, and there you have the result. Now we can filter this data further by using a where method. And here we filter for amount greater than 100. Let's run that and look at results. And there you have it. Similarly, uh, 
we can do aggregation functions as well. As you can see, these functions provide SQL like functionality. Now, let's do a group by on customer country and do a sum on amount. So, we have two customer countries here USA and Canada. So, let's run this. We should have two rows. Okay, and there you have. Now, instead of doing this, we can write actual SQL statements. So, for that, first we need to create a view. So, on the data frame, we do a create or replace temp view and provide a view name, in this case, orders. And now we are ready to write SQL statements. So, spark.sql and our SQL statement. So, in this case, select star from orders. This will select all the data from the orders view, therefore from the data frame. And there you have the result. Okay, now uh, let's write another SQL statement and this time do a group by statement, similar to what we have done earlier, but this time using the SQL group by. So group by customer country, sum on amount, and there you have the result. Okay, now we will save our data to the file system. So we will do a data frame dot write and provide a path where the data must be written. So in this case, data slash out. So let's run that. Okay, now let's go and refresh our data directory. And there you see there is a folder called out, and you can see many part files there. There are eight of them, and we were probably not expecting this number of files here and how the data is organized depends on how many partitions we had so if we open each of these files we can see there is one record in each of them so this is not what we probably want let's partition the data differently and write again okay so uh, this time we will partition by customer country so data frame dot repartition on customer country and we have a new data frame csv df3 so the repartition partitions the data in memory and now while writing we do a partition by customer country the partition by part here will create subdirectories by customer country our output directory is data slash out one so let's run this refresh the data directory and there you have out one and now look at this you have two sub directories one for customer country canada and another for customer country usa because that's what you partitioned by okay let's open one of the part files and those are five records for customer country usa and let's open the one for canada this should have three records so this is how you can partition data So with that, we come to the end of our PySpark tutorial.